there. The person you're calling isn't picking up. There's any number of reasons why they're not answering, but sometimes your mind goes to the dark place and you decide they've blocked your number. When you block a number, you no longer receive calls or texts from that number. iPhones take it a step even further by including FaceTime. So how can you tell if you've been blocked? Well, there isn't any kind of official notification, but you can make an educated guess by reading some tells. Your first tell is the radio silence. Calls and texts are going unanswered. It looks like the texts are getting received, but no reply. What gives? Huh? Well, if your number is blocked, those texts aren't getting delivered and those calls aren't ringing on the other end. Another big tell? The number of rings you hear before going to voicemail. If all you're hearing is a single ring before being directed to voicemail, then you've been blocked. An unusual number of rings doesn't mean anything particular, but if you're only getting the one, then voicemail, you've been blocked. Another tell, if you receive an automated message after making the call. It's not an absolute, but if you get a call along the lines of the customer you're trying to reach is unavailable, then there's a good chance you're never going to get through. There's other reasons you might be getting this message, but if you're getting this message every day, But hey, this new series is going to be awesome. You it should is called explain yourself because they might just think you're just mean. I like to see you in person. That's why. Okay? <laughs> I don't like the phone at all. I loved it when text messaging came in because you didn't have to actually pick up and call. You could just voice text because, you know, you get on the phone, you have to do, hey, how are you? And then there's that chat back thing. And, like, I just skip all that. Like, what do we need? Let's get directly to it. All right? That's just who I am. But then this series, we're going to be talking about what is it that could, we could be doing or that we could not be doing that would be blocking God from hearing us. But before we really dive into part one today, I kind of want to give you guys just a little bit of update on where we are with everything going on with our expansion project. I don't know if you noticed when you drove in, things look again a little bit different. This week, we had a lot that happened. I don't know if you noticed, new metal went on our nursery that was an eyesore. Did you see it? That is where you clap. Here we go. Thank you. We had volunteers, guys, who came and busted it all day yesterday to get the metal on the building because it is our goal to get in that nursery in the next two weeks, all right? That is a, that's going to be tough, but if you've been inside that building or you haven't, it's un believable. It is going to be like nothing you have seen on this campus. It is beautiful. And we are getting ready to have that building open and ready for all those little beautiful babies and toddlers to be in there spread out. It's going to be amazing. And if you aren't serving in nursery, I bet you're going to want to in a couple weeks. I'm serious. It is going to be amazing. And we're going to have live feed over there as well. So also on the other side, you probably noticed that our entire pasture is like all the field is all dug up. That's because the new septic system is going in. We're about one day away from having in a whole new system, which is unbelievable. And on the other side, if you pop your head in in the midweek, we keep those doors wide open, um, letting everything in there kind of air. But we, the electricians have been here. We've been doing all the rough in and walls are going up. So if you're a guy or a girl, okay, and you're like, you know, I really would like to be a part of this. Like, I just want to get my hands in there and do something. Well, I've got just the thing for you. Okay. So in the next two weeks, all the stud walls, they are 20 foot, 23 foot tall stud walls in this next building. They're all going to be laid down in 10 foot sections and put together. But then we're going to need some guys or some girls with some strong backs and some tools to come in and help us stand them up and secure them. All right. So you'll see it on Facebook. We'll put it out there on social media when it's going to happen. But I'm just telling you in advance, we're going to need some help. That's one thing that we can do ourselves that we don't have to hire. It will save us a little bit of time and money. So we'll let you know, but that's going to happen in the next week to two weeks. We'll be doing that. All right. So let's dive right in today into part one. If you're taking notes, here's the title of part one of blocked. It's simply this, try to block me, but you won't stop me. Now, if you ever played sports, I played volleyball. Blocking was a part of that sport. So is it in basketball? If you've ever watched it, I mean, one of the coolest things ever is to be able to block somebody. You feel so powerful if you are tall enough in basketball or volleyball to actually get up and block someone to put a stop to what they're trying to do. Well, today, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about as we look at our prayers being blocked from God. Now, we told you sometimes it's things that we can do. Sometimes it's things we're not doing. But I want you to think about your prayers in this respect. Your prayers are messages that are being sent to God. Now, we live in a day and an age where we're sending messages all day long, every day, 
right? And there's a lot of different options. You can pick up the phone and call. It's not my first choice. You can kick over an email, but you know it might be a few hours before they respond. You can send a text. That's probably one of the fastest ways. You can send somebody a messenger, you know, a messenger, because you know what happens, right? As soon as you click on it, what do they know? They know you saw it. There's no getting around it. You know what I'm saying? And then you're wondering to yourself, why have they left me on red? And that's what you're all wondering about us, right? Why do pastors leave me on red? Because we don't like to message. We don't, we don't even want to even answer. No, I'm just kidding. But everybody, we have all these different ways that we send messages. And I want you to imagine that's how your prayers are to God. They are messages, okay? But imagine if there is a force, okay, that is stepping in and literally blocking those messages from making it all the way to the throne. You see, oftentimes when we're praying, we feel like nothing is happening, Have you ever prayed about something for the longest time and you just feel like, you know what, God, I guess you're just ignoring me. Like, I guess you're just not listening. You're not hearing me. Maybe you're taking a nap. Maybe you went on vacation to Destin, but you're just not doing anything about it. Well, today we're going to help you to understand that it may not be that God is not hearing, may not be that God is not listening. It may be truly that your prayers have been blocked from being answered. Look at Ephesians chapter six and verse 12. It says this. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. This tells us very clearly that there's an enemy out there. And if there's an enemy, okay, he is coming against anyone and everyone who is trying to draw closer to God and get messages to God. He doesn't want God to answer your prayers. He doesn't want God to hear your prayers. But here's the thing. He can't delete the message, okay? He may be able to hack your email. He may be able to tap your phone. He may be able to hear what you're saying, but he doesn't have the ability to delete it. But he does have the ability to delay the answer from coming, all right? He has the ability to delay, and I'm going to prove this to you this morning. Go with me to Daniel chapter 10. We're going to jump in at verse 1 in just a moment. But let me give you some context. Daniel was a Hebrew boy who had been taken into exile by the Babylonians. Okay, so Daniel is now serving the king. He's in the king's palace. He serves in the palace and God had given him the ability to have visions and interpretations. All right. So that kind of takes you through through chapters one through nine. But Daniel, his heart is broken because Daniel really wants to see God deliver his people and bring them back to Jerusalem so they can worship in the temple. Okay, God had exiled them due to their disobedience. Okay, so God was bringing punishment upon them. He promised it was going to be 70 years. But Daniel has been praying so hard that God would relieve them from this exile and take them back to their homeland. So follow me in verse 1, chapter 10. It says this. In the third year of the reign of King Cyrus of Persia, Daniel, also known as Belshazzar, had another vision. He understood that the vision was concerning certain things that were to happen in the future, times of war and great hardship, as if they weren't already under a lot of hardship at that moment. It says, when this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. How long is that? 21 days, okay? Three weeks, 21 days. Listen to this. He'd been in mourning. Why was he mourning? Because he wanted his people to be able to go back to their homeland and worship God in their temple, because that's where the Holy of Holy was. That's where God's presence was. It says, all that time I had eaten no rich food, no meat or wine crossed my lips. I had used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. Then we're going to jump down to verse 12, and it says this. Then he said, this is an angel that has now come to Daniel in this vision, and he says, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day, what day? Thank you. We're catching on. Okay. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request was heard in heaven. Since the very first day you prayed it, God heard from that very first moment. But follow the rest of this verse. It says this, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the king of Persia blocked my way. 
Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit of the king of Persia. What this literally is telling us is that from the moment Daniel began to pray, he was praying the right thing. He was praying, God, if you go in and read it, God, forgive us. Forgive me. Forgive my people for walking away. Forgive us for all the things that we did wrong. God, bring us back into our homeland so we can worship you, which is what you originally wanted. He was mourning, and he was fasting for 21 days. And it says that from the moment he started praying that prayer God heard it God dispatched an angel to come and to answer that prayer but the angel was blocked because of what supernatural warfare in the heavenlies that you and I cannot see all right so what you need to begin to understand in this series right out of the bat is that God yes he does hear your prayers but you don't always get the answer in the time that you want and part of that time is because there's supernatural warfare that's happening that you cannot see that angels and demons are literally fighting over the answer of prayer coming to you all right i know that kind of may blow your mind but that's what it is you need to begin to realize that there's things in your life that you're praying for right now and the enemy's intention by delaying the answer okay he cannot delete your prayer but he can delay the request and the approval, if you will, by the, the warfare that's happening. He can't delete it. He can delay it. But he wants you to give up. Okay, that's the whole point. When you're praying for that loved one and you're thinking, you know what? I've been praying for years and years and years and years. And their heart's just too hardened. And you know what? I'm wasting my breath. You don't give up. That's what the enemy wants you to do. When you're praying for your marriage, when you're praying for those relationships, those careers, whatever it is that you're praying over and over and over, and you, you begin to think, you know what? I've been praying for this for so long. I'm sick and tired of praying about this. God, are you listening? Are you just ignoring me? Did I do something wrong? I want you to remember that the enemy is trying to delay that request. Why? Because he wants you to get discouraged. He wants you to get frustrated. He wants you to get so upset that you say, you know what? God, I may not walk away from you, but I'm done praying that prayer. And God's like, don't give up. Man, from the moment you started praying, I heard you. And so often you pray those prayers and you just feel like you're all alone. You just feel like, you know, I don't, I, 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 I just feel so all alone. And King David, man, in his journey, you go through the book of Psalms and you see how he felt this way over and over and over. Look at Psalms, verse 42. Verse 3, it says this. My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? Think about this. How often do you make a statement to people to say, yeah, I'm praying. Man, I'm really believing God for this. And people are like, yeah, where's your God? Where's your God? Because he's not moving, is he? Mm, you're still sick. I don't see that relationship being restored. I don't see the things you're believing for actually happening. But you know what? That's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to give in to that pressure and say, you know what? You're right. You're right. But David said, my tears have been my food day and night. We're going to teach you today how to, sustain, how to sustain through those moments where the enemy is truly delaying your prayers from being answered. How do you hang on? How do you keep fighting through those moments? I'm just going to tell you, uh, this is going to be way different of a message than you have heard in a while. Um, it's almost like God uh, is giving us a, a continuation of 42 because he just because the season isn't over, and he just continues to do things and continues to show us things. But we also continue as as God's people, at least being a part of this house. We signed up for battle. We signed up for warfare because. Because there's a promise, there's a moment of arrival waiting for us where God says, when this season is finished, when this time of fighting is finished, I'm going to bring a harvest that is going to blow your mind. So if you, if you think in your heart and in your life that, that when, when, you are, when you are praying and believing for, for God to bring that promise uh, to pass in your life, but also for us as a church family. If you think that you're going to pray through that without going through a, a, a valley and through a season of fighting for your life, then you're sorely mistaken. If you think that you can, um, you can just live 
as a, 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 a Christian, a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ without, without a fight, then you're sorely mistaken. I'm sorry that, that when I said on three, raise your hand, I didn't give you the disclaimer that, that this life and living for God was going to be one big battle. I'm sorry I didn't have time to tell you that at the end of the message that day when we were preaching our hearts out. But know this, when you sign up for battle, when you sign up to follow God and to live for him, his spirit consumes you. His spirit goes before you. His spirit surrounds you. Just like we sang about a little while ago, even when you feel like you're surrounded, you are surrounded by him. So, so when you're pouring your soul out, I'm trying to teach you how to pray. When you're pouring your soul out, Regarding anything that is close to God's heart, you're praying for, for, for your, 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 your child to come off of drugs. You're praying for that, that loved one to come back. You're praying that your, your relationship with God would go deeper and deeper and deeper. You're praying and praying and praying with, with, with not holding anything back. You're giving God everything you have. I'm going to tell you right now that there is going to be demonic interception that tries to slow down that tries to delay those prayers reaching God or those answers reaching you. And so, you know, for us, this season has been, uh, it has been a year, guys. It's been a year. And I know there's many of you who have experienced it because it starts at the head and makes its way down. So whatever we experience first, then it trickles down and you get to experience it too. So the reason you've been going through such battles this year is because it's a, it's a battle against the house of God. It's a battle against this house because of what God is wanting to do. So when we're praying, we need to realize that there's going to be many times that we are praying with tears, with moments of weeping, moments of sorrow, moments of fighting. And this week has certainly been one of those weeks for me. Uh, from Tuesday on, I'm just telling you guys, I'm just going to shoot straight. Man, the enemy has held nothing back this week. Nothing. The, the, the hardest, most uh, fiercest demonic battle. And, and for those of you that have heard my story, uh, I dealt with, uh, with literal demonic activity in my home for a year when I, before I ever m- went to Bible college. And I've seen some stuff, guys. I could tell you some things. I have seen some stuff. But I've never felt anything as strong or as dark or as demonic, as powerful as what we've been wrestling with and maybe some of you have been wrestling with this week. So I want to tell you something that happened. You know, God's just been pouring out his his word and his promises to us as we've been fighting, and uh, there's been a lot of sleepless nights, um, a a lot of warring, a lot of just waking up weeping uh, because of the the battle that's that's on us as pastors, but also the battle that's on many of you. And I I woke up, uh, I believe, Thursday, was it Thursday morning? Um, Woke up, and we, we went to the gym. Is that when this happened? What morning was it? It was Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, um, woke up and and we headed to the gym and and man, I'm just I'm I'm a mess. I woke up just with a heavy, dark, r- just wrestling with this demonic power from the time I woke up and and I just woke up weeping, just a uh, weeping more of a uh, this is overwhelming. It's it I, I'm fighting and fighting and fighting and so. You know, I'm working out, and I'm sitting on the, uh, on the, the, the leg press, and something happens. Uh, I see something come floating over my shoulder, a little piece of paper, and it lands on the floor. And in the moment, you know, I'm totally a wreck. And I'm like, God, you, you've got to talk to me. You've got to show me. You've got to speak to me. You've got to answer me. I want this thing to be gone. I want this to be done. I'm so sick and tired of fighting. I'm just tired, God. And so this little piece of paper floats over my shoulder, and he said, pick that up and look at it. So I picked it up, and it was a, uh, it was a barcode with numbers on it. And now, in order for me to in a, share with you what went through my mind in literally three seconds, I have to give a background to, to barcodes and what they mean. So um, maybe you've never heard this before, but this will probably blow your mind. So in, in, uh, in Revelation, the barcode is actually prophesied in Revelation. Uh, you go to Revelation 13, verses 16 through 8, and it says, He, being the uh, Antichrist, required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. Move to the next scripture. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one 
with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. And then there should be another scripture that talks about buying and selling. Hold on. There is, I don't have it in front of me. Okay, so basically what it says is it says that no buying and selling will take place without this number. It's the scripture in between those two scriptures. It says no buying or selling will take place without this number, without the number, the mark of the beast, 666. So this obviously was written uh, long ago. And in um, October of 1949, Norman Woodland and uh, Bernard Silver of Philadelphia submitted a patent for something called classifying apparatus and method. And basically what it was is it was a barcode system. Um, It was an answer to being able to swipe products very quickly and be able to identify what those products were and how much those products cost. In the 70s and 80s, the grocery store chains made this huge where now they're swiping cans and swiping cereal boxes, everything, throwing them in the cart so that they can quickly scan all of these these items very quickly. So let me explain to you. Let's pull that up again. The barcode uh, system, let me explain just very quickly. So so in every barcode, the way they designed it, there's a. Um, if you guys are in retail, you'll know that there are um, templates built into every code, and they they call this uh, this template a global trade item number or a GTIN uh, at the. And this is marked at the point of sale. These lines that you see are are thicknesses actually read by a laser scanner, and each thickness represents a uh, a different. Every space and thickness represents a mark, which represents a number. So each line that you see in space represents numbers, all right? So um, there, there is a, a principal control code that controls the entire system of commerce internationally. Uh, some barcodes vary from nation to nation, but all the barcodes carry this one template, this one code built into all of it, and it is the number 666, and it's been happening since the early 40s, 30s. Um, 40s. And so look at these two numbers. Two skinny lines in the very beginning, two skinny lines in the middle, two skinny lines on the end represent the number six. Any barcode you look at will have the number embedded into it, 666. So for years, we've already been operating by the fulfillment of prophecy that said that the beast would have his claim on economy. He would control buying and selling. You cannot basically buy or sell without the enemy having his mark on society. Now I could do a whole series just on this, but I'm just telling you, the second that I saw that barcode, immediately I knew this is a season of attack. It's a season of demonic warfare. It's a, it's a wilderness moment. It's a time in the desert where you're going from mountaintop to mountaintop. You're in the valley, and you're being attacked. And I'm like, God, I know I'm being attacked. It's obvious I'm being attacked, but give me a promise here. Show me what you're doing. Well, on, I want to show you the barcode that I saw that landed on the floor. It's sitting, it's right here, but it's way too small for you to be able to see it. So let's pull it up. So here's the barcode. As you can see, two skinny lines in the, in the, on the beginning, in the middle, and on the end, 666. To the left and to the right, there's, there's numbers on the outside, 8-4. And those are the two things I saw. I saw the 666, which I knew represented a season, but I saw 8-4 on both sides. And God said, I want you to read Psalm 84 because I have something to show you. Before we go there, if you need to go back and look at the series 42, and you need to hear everything that was rolled out in that whole series because it's, it's huge. Basically, what I do want to point out right now is in Revelation 11 and, and verse 2, it talks about how there will be a, um, a, a season of attack and a season of preservation. A season of attack and a season of preservation. So there's two seasons represented here, of, and these seasons are 42 months, okay? So there's two seasons represented. 42 plus 42 equals 84. So we go to Psalm 84, and God is wanting to show you and I both about these seasons of attack and these seasons of the wilderness. So as, as, you, as you move there, if you brought your word, go to Psalm 84, and we're going to pull out just a, a certain uh, portion of the scripture that the Lord brought to my heart. But I want to give you an overview of Psalm 84. This is King David writing this. And he is, um, the, annually in, in Israel, uh, there was two... Um, 
there was two instances where the people would go on a pilgrimage or they would go on a journey to Jerusalem, all right? It was either once a year where all the people would gather together to worship in the temple, and it was a great time. Uh, but they traveled, but people traveled from miles and miles and miles around to go to Jerusalem uh, to be there and to celebrate and to worship together, and they called it Zion. Jerusalem is Zion. It's the city of our God. It's the place where the people of, uh, of Israel always said, we wish we could live there around the clock. We wish we could be like the priests and the prophets and all these people. They get to be in God's presence all the time. We wish we lived in God's presence because there is peace and there is protection and there is prosperity, and Jerusalem represented the promises of God. Who wants the peace of God to reign and rule in your life? It only comes in his presence. You get in the presence of God and it changes everything. So everybody wanted to be in Jerusalem. So that was one instance. The other instance is when every time they would go out to battle, every time they would go and fight, when they won, they would head to Jerusalem so they could celebrate and have a huge, huge party. And they would sing and they would shout and they would dance. So there's these two instances where, where they head to Zion, but no matter which way you go, in order to get to Zion, you have to go through the desert. You have to go through the valley of Baca. And I want to share this with you. Psalm 84, it says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. What he's saying is, whose heart is set on getting to Jerusalem and worshiping you there. As they pass through the valley of Baca, They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before the Lord in Zion. So I want to spend just a few minutes to break this down for you because this is going to help you so much in your moments where you are going from mountaintop to mountaintop. Understand that you cannot do this thing called living for God. You cannot get to Jerusalem. You cannot get to Zion without getting through, going through the valley before you get there, all right? The valley is a place that is dry. The valley is a place that's hot. The valley is a place where uh, it, th- there's, not, there's not any water, and it, and it leaves you uh, parched, and it leaves you thirsty, and it, and it leaves you in a, in, a, in, a, in a point of vulnerability and a place of weakness, and it's exactly where the enemy wants you you to be. But what we need to understand today in your prayer life and your walk with God, it's a journey. Look at somebody and just say it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a jur- it's a process. God wants to take us through this journey. He wants to take us through the process. But notice we're going through the process. So if we're going through the process, it means we're not staying there. We're not stopping there. We might go through it, but we're not going to stop and we're not going to stay. I love what, bring Psalm 42 up in verse 4. It says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy, praise among the festive throng. That's King David again in Psalm 42. And he's talking about those moments where they come back from battle and they're heading into Jerusalem. And, and he talks about going and singing with shouts of joy. That word joy in the Hebrew, it means that you're happy because you just won the fight. Now I want you to get that deep in your spirit. You're not going to have joy in your walk with God unless you have been through a fight. Unless you have been through the valley, you can't have that moment of celebrating the victory that God has given you. See, here's what we want to do. We want to take shortcuts. We want to skip the valley altogether, and we just want to have joy. We want to skip the fight, skip the valley, skip the desert, dry moments where we just are are completely spent and weak and vulnerable, where we just are about to die. We want to skip those times of the process of God perfecting us to be in his presence. We want to skip the test and we just want to have joy. Well, who wouldn't? (laughs) Who wouldn't want to just, who wouldn't want to just celebrate of all the great things that God has done and, and who you've become and what you've been through? You can't get there unless you've gone through something. And so you have to understand that the, 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 the desertous moments that you're going through, the, the, the battles that you're fighting and the tears that you're crying, God is cultivating you. 
He's preparing you. He's taking you through a process for that moment to where eventually you will. Listen to me. If you don't quit, if like Paul said, if you, if you keep your eyes on the prize and you press on, press on, press on, and you don't turn to your left, you don't turn to your right, you don't look back, but you keep moving forward and you don't quit, you will make it to Zion. You will make it to Jerusalem. You will be able to cry out and celebrate the goodness of your God in the city streets. You will be able to turn to your friends and your neighbors and tell them the, the battle stories of everything that happened out there. You're not going to believe what happened to me in the wilderness. Man, we thought we weren't going to make it financially. Man, we were down to the last can of beans in, in, in the pantry. I'm telling you right now, it got really, really bad. I thought we were done. But just when I thought we were done... Baca is a plant, the valley of Baca. Baca is a plant that survives in the desert through the driest times. It survives without the water. It survives. God's telling you today, you're not going to die. Now the enemy wants to tell you, you're not going to make it. You can't do it. You might as well give up. But God is saying, Baca. You were made to thrive. You were born to survive. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Baca. Say Baca. Baca. You can survive. You will survive the valley. You will survive the wilderness. You will survive the battle, but you cannot quit. There's going to be spiritual battles. It's temporary. When you're going through, you have to go through the Valley of Baca to get to Jerusalem. You're going to go through it, but it's temporary. It will end. Listen to me. This is what God's saying today. As you're praying those prayers where you're pouring out your soul, you're going through a season of weeping. You're, you are crying before God, and you're asking God to move mountains in your life. You're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you feel like you're all alone. You feel like God can't hear you. You feel like your, your prayers aren't being answered. Listen to me. What you're feeling and what you're experiencing, it is temporary. The spiritual battle that you're going through, the spiritual battle that I'm going through, it is temporary because every season has an end. Every season has a beginning. Every season has an end. You're single. You're waiting for God's girl, God's guy. Right? Like Jake said, it's temporary. The sickness you're dealing with. Hey, listen to me. I'm just going to shoot straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff. This is reality. Either God's going to heal you and you're going to live, or if you've made heaven your home, you have been, you've been promoted to the greatest calling that we could ever experience, and that's being in the presence of Almighty God. You can't lose. We win. Whatever you're going through, it is temporary. Temporary. Though sorrow may last for a night, his word says what? Joy comes in the morning. What does that joy mean in Hebrew? It means that we have been through the battle. Sorrow, weeping, crying, sleepless nights, waking up drenched in sweat. I don't know about you. When I do battle, I sweat. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I've been praying. I've been, every time I get in God's presence and I start fighting these stupid demons, I start sweating. I'm just telling you, that season, it's coming to an end. It's temporary. It's coming to an end. And, and before you know it, the joy that you've been waiting for, if you're willing to fight, if you're willing to keep pressing your way through the desert, if you're willing to make your way through Baca, if you're willing to press on, press on, press on, keep moving, you're like, how am I going to make it? One step at a time. And don't stop. Don't stop. How am I, how am I going to, how am I going to, look at the distance. Shh, shh, shh. Keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Children of Israel, finally they got it. After 40 years of circling and cycling in the desert. All right, look at this next part. It says, hope I haven't skipped anything. It's good stuff. Next part says, the rain also covers it with pools. So, so the rain that this passage is talking about, tell me when to stop. The rain, because I've got three more messages, just boom, boom, boom. So the rain that it talks about in this passage of Scripture, listen to me, it's so cool. In, in the Valley of Baca, there's a summer season where the Baca plant survives in the dry, arid valley. But then the fall rains come, and they cover the desert in water. 
and it creates pools of refreshing. It creates pools that provides strength to men. Remember I told you, any, any season that you're going through, and this is what God was showing me with that barcode, is that it's a season of attack. It's a season of weeping. And it, it's a temporary season. And when this season is over, the rains are going to come. The rains are going to, even when you're in the desert, it's going to rain. And there's going to be pools of refreshing where God restores your spirit, where he renews your soul, where he gives you what you need so you can keep going. Now, I want to share, uh, I'm going to share that text now, uh, Brandon. Um, I, 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 uh, as I've been doing battle this week, I thank God. Don't you thank God for those um, that are doing the battle with you? You have friends that love you, loved ones, and, and when you're going through the battle, they're fighting with you. Uh, they're not they're not cheering you on uh, from, uh, you know, from the sidelines. They're with you. And, and, and there's moments where you really need God to speak through people because you feel like, I cannot do this anymore. This week, I, I'm blown away at how many people texted me uh, as, as I was just really, really struggling, having a hard time. This is just one of those texts, but I want to read it to you. This is from, from Marty. Marty didn't share this with you because I wanted you to see it in service. But Marty and I were going back and forth talking about spraying this parking lot. Uh, as there's weeds <laughs> in the parking lot, and, and Marty is on it. He is like, he is like the weed Nazi. And, uh, and so he's like, we got to get this thing sprayed. And uh, so it says, sounds good. I'm sure you know this. This is me. If we get it, sp- he said it was going to rain, all right? If we get it sprayed before it rains, the rain, I think, activates the chemical. Depends on what kind of chemical you're using. He says, I'm spraying hi- Hivar, which is a soil sterilant, And if we get a lot of rain, it will kill the soil everywhere the water runs. So, okay, well, then let's not do that. (laughs) So, obviously, Marty voice texts when he drives because this is what came out. He said, I could spray or him 43 tonight and do the high bar later, whatever you think. Do you know what the Lord spoke to me when I saw that? That this season of 42... is about to come to an end. And the next season is about to begin. What season have we just come into? Fall. Scripture's talking about the fall rains that fall in the valley of Baca. Whatever season you're going through, it will come to an end and God will send the rains of refreshing. The next part of that scripture says they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. That strength to strength is a Hebrew saying. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a word phrase that they use very often. From strength to strength means he's going to take you from one success to another from one mountaintop to another. But you can't go from one mountaintop to another without going through the valley of Baca, through the valley of weeping, through the valley of battle. But God is telling you this morning, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't keep fighting. No weapon that the enemy brings against you is going to prosper. He might be able to delay our prayers but he can't delete them. He might come against you with everything he has, but he can't stop you if you keep on fighting, if you keep on praying, if you keep getting in God's presence. I want you, this is my challenge to you. Keep Zion. Keep God's presence Keep his word at the forefront of your heart and your mind and make that your soul focus and just say to yourself every day, if I can just get into God's presence, if, I, if, if God, if you'll just unleash the promises, the promises that you, you've set aside for me and for my family, if you just keep pushing towards the things that God has promised you and keep fighting, I'm telling you, God will answer your prayers. He will hear you. He will listen to you. Your prayers will be answered, but you can't stop. You got to keep going. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we know in order to get to Zion, we got to go through the valley, the valley of weeping. 
We know the season is temporary. But I pray, God, right now, I just, Holy Spirit, if you're going through the valley right now, just raise your hand right now. If you're going, if you're in the valley right now, come on, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Come on, real high. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, sweet Jesus. Amen. Come on, keep those hands up. No, we're going to, we're going to fight this morning. (laughs) Come on, come on, we're going to fight. This is, this is, this is not, the enemy's not messing around, so we're not going to mess around. Father, in Jesus' name, every hand that is up right now, we bind together, we agree together in the name of Jesus right now, Father God, in Jesus' name. I speak against the spirit of fear right now. You have sown lies into the hearts of God's people, and you are trespassing on God's property. You cannot cross the bloodline of Jesus Christ. You have no authority in our hearts. You have no authority in our mind. Anxiety, weakness, depression, sickness, bondages, addictions. Holy Spirit, I pray over marriages right now in Jesus' name. Hmm. I pray finances. I pray, God, that you would set our hearts on you, God. I pray that you would set our hearts on Zion. Sweet Holy Spirit. Hmm. I pray for those, God, right now that have been pressing in. They're, they're saying, I want, I want you, Lord. I want more of you, Lord. But I just pray that you would just, just downpour your presence in their life. That they would just know Jesus. Know you in a real way, Father God. There's prayers that are being prayed and they're not answered because there are forces of darkness, God, that are trying to delay these messages from reaching you. Father, we pray against those obstacles. We pray against, God, we, we, we break through the barrier of the front lines of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Sweet Spirit of God. And thank you, Lord. Just begin to thank him right now. Come on, for Baca. <laughs> we are going to survive. We are surviving. We are surviving the wilderness. And God, we, we cannot wait, Lord. We, we long for the moment where we are going to celebrate in the streets of Zion and shout for joy. God, we are going to celebrate and shout for joy. God, the victories and the, that you've given us, the battles that have been won because we endured, because we did not give up, because we were willing to keep on fighting. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, this morning that you're giving us perseverance, that you're giving us a stubborn streak to not quit, but to keep moving forward. We thank you, Father God. Bondage is broken. Sweet spirit. Devil, loose your hands. Father, we love you, God. Thank you, God, for this moment of arrival. Thank you for the great things that you are about to do in this church. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you need Jesus. This is your moment. (laughs) He loves you. He's knocking on your heart's door. He says, admit to me that you're not perfect, that you're not like me, that you've made mistakes. Believe Jesus is the Son of God. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life, and you shall be saved. Who in this room would say, I need that? Would you raise your hand? I just want to pray with you right where you are. Anybody? Sweet Jesus. Church, let's pray this prayer. Father, I love you. Thank you for Jesus. Forgive us of our sins. Jesus is the Son of God. I confess him as Lord of my life. Help us to endure through the valley. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you just prayed that prayer today, we want to celebrate with you. You're going to have so much joy. We want to give you a gift called our Next Step Kit. It's in a green bag on the left as you exit. Make sure you grab one. It's got a brand new Bible, and it's got a message from Brad and I that's going to help you to know what do you do now. Will you guys just put your hands together and just celebrate those today who may have made that decision? Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.